Okay. Well, good morning. Uh, wherever you are uh, listening in from, welcome. And thank you for taking the time to join us. It's my pleasure today to be providing an update on the Perth and Kinross Regional Archaeological Research Framework Project as it reaches the end of its second year in the making. And as the title suggests, it's starting to take form. For those who may be unfamiliar, uh, PCARF is a three-year project that we began in August 2018 with the primary aim of creating a regional framework that is relevant and functional, helping to make the historic environment a value-adding resource that enriches people's lives, strengthens communities through sense of place, identity and education. We're realising this aim through a three-year three-phase work plan, beginning with assessing and summarising the extent of current archaeological knowledge on past human activity in the region. Through a specialist contribution, review and targeted discussion with stakeholders, we then aim to identify gaps in this knowledge base and establish a series of research questions and priorities to address them. The result is hopefully a framework that can be used to appropriately and economically direct future archaeological research, whether developer, academic or community-led. It's a project which we hope will provide practical outcomes and assistance for a wide range of stakeholders, such as historic environment managers, curators, heritage interpreters, um, anyone considering or undertaking archaeology and archaeological research in the region, and not forgetting the county's residents and visitors too. In both process and product, we hope that the framework project will, be, um, will help to raise awareness of the historic environment and encourage public engagement with it. Now, it's important to remember that PCAR is not happening in isolation. It's designed to complement the Scottish Archaeological Research Framework, SCARF, managed by the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Now, through funding from Historic Environment Scotland as part of Scotland's archaeology strategy, uh, the programme of developing regional frameworks uh, is also including uh, a Scottish Islands and a Highlands framework that are underway at the moment. Um, and they all offer an opportunity to provide a finer resolution picture uh, that helps to better inform our understanding of past human activity at both regional and national levels. Now I'd like to kick off with a rapid reminder of project year one uh, before updating you on what's been happening over the past second year of PCARF. Now phase one was broadly defined as assessment. So we made contact with active researchers and specialists working in the region uh, to get updates on current activity and generally gathering together different literature and data sources, uh, such as the wealth of sites and monuments data that's held within the Perth and Kinross Historic Environment Record. Um, we've then been reviewing that and assessing the state of our current knowledge um, based on those resources. Uh, one of the first recommendations of the steering group was to appoint a lead contributor for each of the eight major chronological periods, spanning known human activity in Perth and Kinross from Mesolithic through to modern. Now, the main role of these specialists was to provide a brief period summary identify knowledge gaps and provide, provide um, or at least propose future research priorities uh, which could form a skeletal structure to the framework chapters. Now some of you may remember that at the end of year one, uh, around late August time, um, we had each of the lead period specialists pitching their contributions as discussion provoking talks. Uh, to over 90 peers and local community representatives at the Priorities in Progress conference. Now, there are lots of really useful suggestions and ideas were inputted through the day uh, in workshops and wider discussions. Um, and we've been reviewing that material this year and integrating it into the framework chapter drafts. It's all been great stuff uh, that's helping to build a strong and effective framework by as many voices as possible and for as wide an audience as possible. Now, if you've missed the conference, uh, then the recordings of the presentations are available to view on YouTube and you can find a link to the playlist on the project webpage. page. 
So where are we up to? Well, right now we're coming to the end of year two, which is broadly termed review year. We started by listening carefully to and acting on suggestions and comments from the Priorities and Progress Conference. As part of this, we formed a panel of environmental and scientific specialists at the tail end of 2019. And they're looking at the framework as a whole and feeding the knowledge and experience that they've got in across the chapters. So we've since had some constructive panel discussions and uh, we're continuing to move things forward in tandem with the work on the period chapters. Now phase two is also about bringing more voices, perspectives and experiences um, into play. So we've been engaging more active researchers and heritage professionals to work on the chapter drafts. We've also been working more closely with museums and have developed a system where groups or organisations with collections containing Perth and Kinross material can contribute research potential and priorities relating to their collections. Now I'm still reaching out on this one, uh, so if you're connected to a heritage group or museum with Perth and Kinross material in the collection, or you know of any of um, any other groups, especially the small independents, uh, then please get in touch and um, I'll, uh, I can follow up those leads. Now, sadly, it's not going to be possible to get through this presentation without mentioning the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, as there's no denying that it's delayed and dictated changes to the project. Now, the biggest impact has been a four-month project mothball, and that was because I went on furlough leave uh, to look after my three-year-old son uh, when the nurseries closed for lockdown. So we're therefore, we've got a four-month extension uh, to the project to accommodate the pause. And the project completion date has now been revised to the end of November uh, 2021. So that means that year two also gets an extension um, and it's now running until November this year. Now, the main challenge encountered since recommencing has been people's availability to contribute due to the heavy workloads that they've been encountering following lockdown. So this has caused delays to chapter draft production, and in turn, that's compressing the time available uh, for wider consultation. So what I've been doing is inviting a second phase of specialists uh, who'd already volunteered to review uh, content um, to take a look at the live chapter drafts uh, whilst they've still been under construction. So the results have been really quite successful and I've currently got multiple contributors feeding into the working draft of the Iron Age Roman chapter, for example. The Mesolithic chapter, uh, the consultation draft, is now complete and it's in circulation and it's available for review. So give me a shout if you'd like a look at that. Um, now, the intention is to have all of the period chapter drafts live in some form by the end of the year. And they'll be available for consultation review until about April, May time, 2021. At which point they'll then be internally reviewed by the steering group. Now, I also had big plans for wider community engagement this year uh, through a touring exhibit and workshop in the libraries. But the various restrictions have made this unworkable. So I'm having a bit of a rethink there. Um, in the meantime, though, I'm more than happy to virtually attend local groups and historical society meetings, uh, give a talk, hold a question and answer session, discussion session with members. Um, so spread the word and get in touch if you're interested in taking me up on that offer. Uh, finally, a quick word about what's going to happen next. Uh, that's phase three. It's about formalising the contributions received into practical and relevant outputs for different stakeholding and user groups, with the completed framework scheduled to be launched around the end of November 2021. Now, production year is going to be a bit compressed uh, due to the pandemic delays, uh, so it'll be more like a production five months, uh, finalising the drafts and supporting figures into web-ready outputs and useful resources. Now, there's still plenty of time left if you'd like to get involved in the project and there's still plenty of ways in which you can do it. 
Uh, we very much want your views and ideas on the drafts, as well as contributions from other research that's ongoing uh, or might not be represented yet. So please get in touch if you're interested in being part of the process. The easiest way to get in touch is via the website where you can find links to the conference videos, uh, the contributions form is there, and you'll also find my email address uh, to express your interest in reviewing the chapter drafts. So get in touch, get involved, and get excited for the launch of the framework at the end of next year. Thanks for your time.